Okay, let's go into the mechanics of actually fasting. You know, how do we actually do the thing? Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. That way, when we release new episodes, you'll get notified. This is just our way of fasting. There's no right or wrong way to do it. We each come on this planet and operate however we see fit. We eat different ways, we think different thoughts, and we fast different ways. But this is an idea of how you can go about it. If you were to do a five-day, what we do extended intermittent fasting. Again, we're not promoting going for five days without eating any food. We're not even promoting going five days just eat, drinking water. You can certainly do that. But in our community, we, we, we take a very common sense, reasonable approach that we can do. We do this once a month, once a month. And then once a month, we do a three day. And then every week of the month, we do a one day. So it's always a part of our just daily habits. But we do a, kind of what we call bookending. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we support not eating by strategically eating to not be hungry. So it usually ends up with some clear liquid in the morning, our shifted coffee later morning. And this is, of course, working with somebody who has a typical schedule. You know, some of you guys are on night shift. That can be a lot different. Mini feedings. I'll show you in the next slide what that means. And if needed, depending upon how much stress we have in our lives, how busy we are, a one meal a day constitutes or, you know, helps us to create that fasting because it's, and it says as needed, only if you need it. Oftentimes we find out, you know, I really didn't need that. On Wednesday, I'm not going to have that meal. See how long I can push my window of not eating. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, insert those between the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we shoot for a liquid only day. So our body really does very little digesting. There's that gut healing. And we rely on clear fluids uh, like tea and uh, water and just clear coffee. We call this a um, fat and isolation beverage that is our shift of coffee. And um, clear fluids like broth. Or take your broth and put a pat of butter in it. It's amazing how many of us realize, wow, that really got us through a whole day of not eating. Pretty powerful. And the cool thing is, once you do it, you own it and your body remembers what it experiences. So our mini feedings or our fasting fuel that we use are things like, as I said before, uh, a, a high quality broth, could be bone broth, could be chicken broth, could be beef broth, vegetable broth, whatever your broth is. Put a pat of butter in it. Eggs cooked any way you like. Fat bombs. You've probably heard those out in the ketogenic world. It's just a, a very simple recipe. Usually involves some kind of cream cheese or butter and a little bit of flavorings involved in that. We have that inside our community if you're interested in any of those recipes. Um, celery with cream cheese is a perfect example. What is celery? It's a lot of fiber, a lot of water, and this much carbohydrate, right? And cream cheese is a healthy fat. So the two of those together will keep us sated for a long time after eating. Leafy greens, there's your power and your cruciferous vegetables. These are the carbohydrates that we rely on. Okay, cruciferous vegetables, nothing, no root vegetables, just vegetables that grow above the ground and especially the cruciferous family. They're the lowest in carbohydrate, lowest in glucose, so the lowest in becoming blood sugar. That's why we choose them. Okay, we call them healthy vehicles for fat, butter or olive oil on that. And we also have a great recipe for a creamy ah, cauliflower or celery soup. That becomes our one meal a day. This is what we use to get us through hours of not eating and claiming all the powerful benefits that fasting has for us if we choose to take it. Remember, it's not about working harder. It's about working smarter. Yeah. Uh, so this is a shift journey in general. If you choose to become a part of our community, what we're all about is understanding how food truly becomes blood sugar and truly becomes a stimulant for the fat storage hormone insulin. And as you know now, all of the ons and offs that happen because insulin's domineering presence in our lives. So we eat glucose aware. We naturally intermittent fast because eating glucose aware allows us more fat in our lives. Keeps us not hungry more often. Now we can extend into real deal fasting. This is why people in our community lose 68 pounds, 43 pounds, 
heart disease blockages, the practitioner can't find it on the, uh, you know, the test screen. They're like, wait, where is the blockage we've been following for six months? It's gone. Okay. Off blood pressure medications, off diabetes medications, having no pain when you put your foot on the floor when you get out of bed in the morning, actually wanting to get out of bed in the morning. Imagine that. Imagine being free from cravings. Imagine looking at the clock and saying, wait, it's 2.30? I didn't even take a break for lunch. I wasn't hungry. Look at that. I forgot to eat. That's what happens. Again, it's like being 12 or 7 again. You're just not controlled by food anymore. And all of this together in community with others doing the exact same thing is what the permanent solution is all about. You end up living it. You end up living it. And you know what it is? It's just you knowing how you operate and then putting right action in instead of all this action, all the chaos out there, right? We got to kick harder, run faster, eat more nutrient dense, eat morally, eat superiorly, eat locally, eat sustainably, all valuable concepts. But until you can know that you get your insulin minimized, there's no way that body fat is going to be mobilized. And when body fat is not mobilized, all those other wonderful you know, benefits that we talked about can't occur. It's up to you. You're in the driver's seat, you are responsible, and we're here to help you out.